Hello chess friends and welcome to Zalov's chess channel and welcome to my best chess games of all time series. So in this series we follow the best of the best, the best chess games that have been ever played in chess history and today I wanted to show you really an immortal game played by the legendary Vasily Ivanchuk. So he played the game in 2008 against Sergei Karyakin. Uh, back in 2008, uh, Sergei Karakin was only 18 years old. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Vasily Ivanchuk was really uh, a respected grandmaster. I think he was in 2008 one of the best uh, chess players. And uh, but uh, the, the Vasily Ivanchuk has really sort of an attractive uh, uh, playing style. I think he plays really this uh, queen sacrifices, rook sacrifices, uh, really this pawn breakthroughs, really this aggressive methods in chess. And that's why we love him. We love her. Uh, we love. Him. His games and uh, he deserves really all the respect he is now this Mikhail Tal of these days I think and he's really attractive to watch as I mentioned so this game was suggested to me by my father he texted me yesterday and said, and said that I should publish this one and I of course wanted to do that uh, it's really a great Im uh, in great and immortal queen sacrifice that Vasily Vanchuk will play here but when we talk about queen sacrifices uh, there are bit for me, there are two kinds of queen sacrifices. The ones uh, in which you're sacrificing maybe the queen and then you have a forced checkmate sequence. I don't think they're just so attractive than this one that uh, Vasily Vanchuk has played because Vasily Vanchuk sacrificed the queen in move 14. Then the game was prolonged uh, for another uh, 30 moves. So it's really incredible to sacrifice the queen in move 14 and then to continue to push then to go into an end game because you have to gr do uh, great calculations to go, uh, to do some great uh, improvements of the position of pieces so that's why it's not so easy to sacrifice the queen in an early stage of the games and that's why this game really deserves to be on our list of this best chess games of all time so be prepared don't show this <laughs> games uh, to your kids because uh, it has some uh, irregularities uh, here in this game uh, Sergei Karakin will make a slight inaccuracy in which he did the, didn't castle in the in the right moment and got punished by the legendary Chucky with an immortal queen sacrifice. So uh, here e4 played by Chucky. We have c5 uh, by Karakin and now knight to f3. We have d6 after d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, and now we have uh, knight to f6, knight to c3. This is uh, most common setup in the Sicilian. And now after a6, uh, Black choose to play the knight of defense, and now we have bishop to c4 and uh, this bishop to c4 is one of the best ideas i think uh, to battle against uh, the Nidorf, uh, with the preparation to play maybe bishop to b3 f3 uh, bishop to e3 bishop to d2 and similar ideas queenside castle getting use of our d file attack and similar ideas so in the game e6 was played you have to challenge i think uh, this light square bishop of of, of white so you have to compete with it maybe in some in some moves you have the opportunity to push the pawn here on d5 and to really uh, liberate this center uh, in the game bishop to b3 uh, played by vasily vanchuk we have b5 also common idea of the knight of defense to simply uh, expand here on the queen side waiting uh, white to castle on the queen side and then you have some dangerous attack possibilities with the move b4 uh, in the game bishop to g5 was played uh, as i said the idea is to play immediately b4 then to deflect uh, this knight from the defense of this e4 pawn then of course to take out uh, with the knight so that's why bishop to g5 a common idea and in the game bishop to e7 uh, getting our bishop of course on this very important diagonal because this uh, pinned by the bishop on the queen was really annoying and it could be uh, really a tactical threat for black queen to f3 uh, again uh, battling against this potential b4 move but also counter attacking a little bit because the queen is uh, attacking the rook indirectly sort of because the serious threat here is to play the move e5 then of course liberating the diagonal and now simply take out the rook so that's why queen to c7 was played by Sergei Karakin with the preparation to play the move bishop to b7 uh, after a potential e5 move so but uh, e5 uh, anyway played by uh, Vasily Vanchuk uh, you have to play bishop to b7 here bishop to b7 was played uh, we have e takes d6 and now bishop takes d6 of course queen takes d6 is not possible because uh, you lose your bishop if you for instance take out the the queen that's also not so good because we can simply take out first the queen of course and we have now a double attack first we have this bishop attacked and also this knight 
uh, on b8 uh, you can of course try maybe something like bishop to g2 but not a problem rook to g1 and now in the next move you lose a piece and it would be game over for black i think so uh in the game as said after this move e takes d6 we have bishop takes d6 and now queen to e3 and it seems now maybe that uh, Ivancho has made some mistakes because this pawn is hanging, but the problem is you cannot take this pawn. This is really a poison pawn. For instance, if you take out the pawn on g2, then rook to g1, of course, attacking the bishop. And now, if you retreat with the bishop, you have gained the pawn, but uh, I think it's game over because we have bishop takes f6. This is a very important move. After g takes f6, we have rook to g7. Uh, getting our rook on a very very active file and now if you for instance try bishop to e7 to get this file uh, close somehow then uh, rook takes f7 is the serious threat after king takes f7 queen takes e6 and i think it came over because you have to play uh, something like king to e8 but now queen side castling is a serious threat now in the next move we could try uh, queen take uh, queen to f7 and somehow uh, get use over the d file because uh, here this uh, rook is of course covering this very important file and i think again it's game over you could try maybe um after this move rook to g1 you could try maybe counter-attacking with the move b4 but again i think it will be game over because we have knight to f5 it's uh, very very tricky you see this knight of the uh, sicilian after something like b takes c3 we have knight to g7 uh, attacking the king if for instance the king goes to f8 then we have bishop takes f6 after something like i don't know uh, c takes b2 we have bishop takes b2 and if you for instance play uh, something like bishop to f4 to attack the queen it's not a problem we have knight to e6 again this very very important maneuver of the knight here after f takes e6 we have bishop to a3 attacking the king you don't want to go of course uh, on the g file after rook to g8 you will have rook to g2 uh, if you for instance go on the e file then again it's very dangerous because we can simply take out uh, here the spawn on e6 and with this bishops uh, aiming with this rook that can participate in the attack with this rook on the g file again it would be game over so you see um here after the move queen on e3 uh, black cannot take uh, the pawn on uh, g2 so that's why here by karakin uh, he played here simply the move bishop to c5 pinning uh, the knight against the queen so uh, here queenside castle played by ivanchuk it seems now that e5 is a good move but i think we can simply play bishop takes f6 immediately because you cannot uh, take of course uh, you cannot take of course the knight because we can uh, take with the rook we have created another uh, very dangerous pin after g takes f6 uh, or similar yes we have uh, here the possibility to play knight to e4 <coughs> again uh, attacking the bishop for instance if you take then we have uh, here the check possibilities or we can take out immediately and now again play on this very very important double check motif and i think again it would be game over here for black so uh, that's why after the move queenside castling uh, here uh, karya can play the move knight to c6 and this is now the main mistake in the game still nothing is lost but uh, it's really um, not such a good idea first of all i think you should have castled here queen uh, castling is the possibility you have to castle i think here uh, securing the king or at least play something like queen to e7 again or bishop to e7 getting at least some kind of a compact position but here uh, knight to c uh, knight to c6 was played by karyakin and this in this particular moment mo moment the fun starts really because here vasily <laughs> sacrificed the queen that had to hurt i think uh, here unbelievable sacrifice simply giving up the queen basically for a pawn uh, then of course you get a tempo and maybe another pawn so this is now our first calculation of course but uh, it's really a tricky queen sacrifice because this bishop's activity is a huge one this bishop's activity is also important and the more important thing is that we have now the possibility to bring also another rook into the attack and that's now something i don't think that the black can handle here because after f takes e6 of course you have to take out the queen knight takes e6 and uh, the queen has to move somewhere in the game queen to e5 was played uh, if you for instance try something like i don't know queen to b8 then again we have knight to g7 uh, first a check after something like knight to f8 we have knight to e6 you can maybe try here um to to play with your king on f7 but now knight to c5 again discoverly attacking uh the, the king and after something like i don't know king to g6 we can take simply another piece 
that's the problem here and after king takes f6 we have knight to d7 fork ideas here and again you lose the queen and this would be i think completely winning end game here for for um uh, for white because we have two extra pawns and uh, it, uh three extra pawns even and it's game over i think so uh in the game queen to e5 was played uh, by kariakin uh, here uh, knight to g7 again again this very annoying check we have cut off here this very important file for the king so the king cannot escape black would love to play something like an i don't know king to d8 king to c8 king to b8 somehow escape maybe to this square but it's not possible because here this rook on d1 is a perfect one and here after king to f8 we have knight to e6 again this is a very nice check and now after king to f7 we have rook to e1 and um here um in this particular moment uh, if you try maybe king to g8 and again it doesn't help you anymore because we have again this possibility to play the move rook to e1 let's see possible continuations if you get out with the queen if you get out with the queen on a light square then of course knight to d4 is winning even immediately because we have a discovery attacking the king and now we can take out uh, the queen so that's why the queen has to go on a dark square uh, let's see the possible continuation again this queen to b8 motif again we have knight to f uh, c5 again this check and again the same idea uh, king to g7 and now bishop takes f6 after king takes f6 again this very annoying fork so this is the main tactical motif that can happen here i think uh, that's why in the game after knight to e6 uh, here king to f7 was played uh, by uh, sergey karakin and now uh, we have rook to e1 and in this position uh, sergey karakin simply um, escaped with the queen because uh, there are really no good squares this is a huge activity that uh, uh, here Vasily Vanchuk has played here after queen takes e1 we have rook uh, knight takes c5 first uh, with his discovered check uh, here king to g6 and now simply taking out the queen here uh, Karakin of course took another piece but now knight takes b7 you see another piece is hanging and this is now a simplified uh, position in which uh, of course uh, uh, black is up the exchange has a rook for a minor piece but if we evaluate this position from this point uh, from this pawn count here we have three pawns three extra pawns and a piece against the rook so this should be probably uh, be enough for winning here for white uh, still you have of course uh, to improve the position of the pieces somehow you have to activate your knights but it's not so easy you see in move 14 uh, Vasily Vanchuk sacrificed the queen but now we have we have really sort of an end game in which you should try to win this somehow but it's not so easy of course you have to play now accurate uh, knight to d4 uh, played by uh, Sergei Karakin we have knight to d6 simply improving the position of the knight uh, getting our knight back now it's time to regroup try to keep the uh, pieces compact we have knight to f8 and here f3 very important move which allows now white uh, to cement the knight on a very active square on the central square uh, here we have b4 and now uh, knight to e4 we have knight takes e4 and now rook takes e4 this is now at least some kind of a compact position still it's very hard to get the spawns rolling you have to be patient here uh, knight takes b3 was split a takes b3 and now a5 here uh, sergey karakin is trying of course to open the a file somehow get this rook on the a file maybe uh, rook to a1 and then maybe go somehow behind the spawns uh, maybe get one of the spawns for instance if white manages to get out get off this uh, a pawn on g2 if we get rid of this pawn on uh, g2 then these pawns are split it's not so good anymore they are not so powerful anymore then uh, all of these weaknesses could be an object of black's attack and this would be a for favorable endgame for black but lastly play simply accurate here rook to g4 first we have king to f6 now knight to e4 sim simply uh, centralizing the knight the knight is now a very good piece uh, on the board and now after king to e5 we have rook to uh, h4 and now finally this move a4 simply trying to open the a file we have b takes a4 rook takes a4 and now uh, knight to uh, c5 attacking the rook rook take rook to a1 and of course king to d2 now uh, there is this idea of Vasily Vanchuk probably here to play the move knight to uh, d3 simply protecting everything again keeping the position compact this is now uh something that you have to do if you lose pawns here you lose probably the game from white's perspective still 
uh, if you get this position into a computer, this is a winning position for white. The evaluation is uh, better for white, but it's not so easy, as I said, to play this uh, enemy. In rook to g8, attacking the pawn, you have to play, of course, uh, g3 uh, with the preparation to play maybe f4, then knight to d3, simply keeping it again compact. Rook to f1, we have uh, here king to e2, and now uh, rook to b1, uh, attacking the pawn, and now we have rook takes uh, b4, and this is now uh even better position here for white because now we have two connected pass pawns and the knight for the rook so this would be uh, this should be really probably a winning game but again uh here Kardakin tries to fight knight uh, king to d5 we have knight to e4 again this centralization move king to c6 and now we have uh, h5 h4 simply improving the position of the pawns here uh we have rook to h1 and now or rook to c4 attacking the king uh, rook to b6 king to b6 and now b4 now it's time to get the pawns rolling now we play something like uh, c3 then maybe rook to c5 c4 then after that maybe b5 simply attacking the king uh, keeping this rooks occupied uh, in the game rook to d8 was played and now as i said rook to c5 uh, rook to a8 and now rook to c3 we have rook to a2 not a problem king to e3 we can still with hide uh, our king maybe here to f4 uh, then this uh, king is not vulnerable to our opponent's attack so that's why rook to e1 not a problem we have king to f4 uh, we have uh, rook to f1 and now uh, rook to h5 rook to a8 again trying maybe something like rook to f8 attacking and maybe get out uh, take out this uh, pawn on f3 here uh, rook to, uh, to h6 with the check uh, king to b5 and now uh, knight to knight to d6 attacking the king here the king has to go on a4 and now simply uh, here in this position Ivanchuk takes another pawn so now we have five extra pawns and a piece for the rook so this is now really a completely winning endgame uh, Kardakin tried king to b3 but another problem rook to c7 you see uh, here Ivanchuk is not losing any pawn incredible endgame here by uh, the legendary Chucky uh, rook to d8 and here uh, knight to f5 and in this position uh, Sergei Kardakin resigned <sighs> let's go back uh, let's go back to this move 14 uh, here queen to e6 incredible queen sacrifice for the initiative getting some tempos this is really one of the best queen sacrifices that i've seen in my life uh great game by chucky and uh, he deserves really all the, all the respect he is the mikhail tal of of the 21st century i think and um, he's still playing some great chess i wish him all of the best in the continuation of this career it's n the chess world would be nothing i think with, without uh, Vasily ivanchuk uh, he makes us happy i think even if he loses games but still 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 he tries to play this attractive style of chess and i will continue to follow his games for sure Okay, I hope you enjoyed this game. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, meanwhile, you can watch my other best chess games uh, of all times from the series. And you can also watch my best chess games played by computers by Alpha Zero, Lila Zero, Stockfish and many, many more. And you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content. Thanks you for watching, guys. And uh, chess is the best, of course.